Manuel Kutose for bringing that insightful story of Kamjoroka University. In support for Kamjoroka University, let's all subscribe to his channels, support his talent. Now, a notable transmission is being witnessed in the media world as the audience is seemingly breaking away from being a receiver to being part of the source of media messages. In an age of content creation and open channels for viewers' opinion, what does this opening of the floodgates mean for traditional? And to shed some light in this, the subject is, take a look. Well, welcome to today's discussion uh, right here on KUTV, a new experience where we are touching on quite an intriguing topic. We are talking about the evolving role of audiences. Now, you see, in the past years, or rather a uh, little bit of time like past time, it was very clear that the audience had a designated passive role and they were the receivers of media content. And in this age, while well, they are going digital with a lot of digital evolutions coming about, the audience has now moved from the delegated passive role and is now moving into being an active contributor and disseminator of information, of content on the social media platforms and all other channels. Now, to talk on this matter, another discuss on, on it more, I'm joined by an, a professional on this field, and without preempting so much, I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. Dr. Ali, introduce yourself to the viewers. Well, hi viewers, my name is Dr. Kalangi Kiambati. I am a communications trainer and consultant at Kenyatta University. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, and without uh, taking so much time, Dr. Terry, around 20 years ago, the media was majorly one way and currently in the current age uh, due to technological evolutions we are able to see uh, something as in the audience is now speaking back is now giving feedback and is actually being part of releasing content in the media platforms various media platforms that is what do you think is the, adv is the advantages of this happening currently Yes, I, I think there is, um, it's a two-edged sword, I would like to call it. Mm -hmm. um, there are many advantages of having the, the audience participate, not just passively receiving the information, mm -hmm. but also actively being the disseminators of this information. Mm -hmm. Citizen journalism is a reality. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the, the audience now setting the agenda mm -hmm. on what issues really matter to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, taking up the role of um, agenda setting is a very important thing for the audience to do. That we are now able to sort of lead the way mm -hmm. for the media, for the mainstream media to, as we knew it. Mm -hmm. And we are telling the media these are the things that matter, these are the things that we want covered, mm -hmm. and these are the things that should set the agenda for us, mm -hmm. or should be the public agenda, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, you would say it is a very, um, it is a very important a thing mm -hmm. for the audience to actively participate in a news um, and information sourcing, packaging, and dissemination. Mm -hmm. But that being said, mm -hmm. we also have the downside of it, which is um, the the flooding of of the of the means. I mean, not mainstream, but social media platforms. Mm -hmm with um, um, people who are not professionally trained to communicate to the masses. And just uh, uh, like we know, all um, professions have their codes of conduct. Mm -hmm. And the coming in of uh, social media platforms and the, the, the audience now being very involved, we have seen cases where issues of decency, issues of privacy, um, infringement into people's privacy and uh, you know, dissemination of uh, very privileged information is now a reality and therefore from that perspective you would also say that uh, it is not really all rosy and it is not all good but uh, the good of it is i think outweighs the bad mm -hmm. in my opinion and that uh, what we need is a little bit more monitoring and regulation of um, the use of social media platforms mm -hmm. but uh, as it were where we are moving we cannot um, hold it in more. We are technology is evolving, and we cannot really stop. Um, you know the mm -hmm. participation of the audience. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe communication is complete when there is feedback. Now, the way we are seeing the audience now responding with their own creations and their own content, could it suggest that for a long time 
the audience has actually been deprived for a long time from being part of productions that are being aired in mainstream media, and it's now a time that they are letting loose. Is that correct to judge like that is the communication coming back? You, you could actually look at it that way, mm -hmm. that for a long time the mainstream media had the monopoly mm -hmm. of information, of news, mm -hmm. of entertainment. Mm -hmm. And there are very many things that we, the audience, might have wanted to say and mm -hmm. might have wanted to pass out there. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the space was very limited um, and we did not have that space. So you could say that out of that um, uh, limitation or feeling um, deprived of mm -hmm. freedom and space for a long time has us now bursting at the seams with, with you know, information that we need to share, things that we need to say, and with, with the freedom of um, owning media platforms, so to speak, um, social media platforms, and the very subjective editorial policies that we have, if they can be called policies, mm -hmm. uh, there isn't much gatekeeping really. Um, we, the audience, post what we think should be posted on our, on our walls, on our pages, on our accounts. Mm -hmm. And it is actually right to say, you could say, um, this deprivation of a long period of time is now having us, you know, eager and uh, excited to, you know, practice and share information that we wouldn't otherwise have been able to share in the past. And now with all this coming about, uh, I perceive a threat to the newsrooms. Mm -hmm. As in, you cannot now be the one breaking the news because, because already the audience that you are targeting does know the news. Mm -hmm. What can newsrooms do to remain relevant in this age? I think um, the, the, the thing that newsrooms can do is really keep up. Um, you know, move to the social media. And the good thing with the professional newsrooms moving to the social media space mm -hmm. is that we are able to have a little bit more objectivity on the social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Because if we, we have a trained journalist packaging information for the social media, it will be on the social media, yes, but still we will have that opportunity for objective, verified facts and professionally packaged information. But the way to go, and we have seen media across the world, um, and even in Kenya, is to really digitize, go online as well. And um, the, 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 the lines between traditional media, as we knew it, um, and, and, and digital, I mean, traditionally distinct channels, are now, the lines are blurring. And we, we are, we, in future, you can only, um, you know, um, see that we are headed in a space where everything is going digital and uh, the media houses will have to survive and to survive we have to um, follow the audience and the platforms that they are now using. And now looking at the traditional role maybe, yes. the media or rather journalists were looked at as the eye of the public. Mm -hmm. Now currently it's like the public has claimed their own eyes. Now looking at the whole subject of now like it's now over there with them now there are scandals that have been happening in the country various things that come and they have a euphoric effect on the internet it comes up and it comes down now you see previously it was like the media or the journalist had the mandate to actually bring out a story follow it up and actually be able to evoke some reaction even from authorities of power currently we find a situation where a story or something may be very, very trendy in the internet, but it comes to a point that it just submerges and is forgotten. Now, would you say, like, the involvement of the audience into the roles that were traditionally played by the media be the cause of such occurrences? I, I do not think the media has lost its role, mm. really, because of the um, the, the fact that the, the audience has more power now in, in terms of um, uh, bringing issues to light and helping them uh, come, uh, you know, get the focus that they need to from the, the authorities that be. I think what the media um, needs to recognize is that the, the audience are there to bring the issues to light, yes, but as media, we cannot, uh, or media professional media practitioners, you cannot. Um, absolutely leave the audience to you know to follow up on issues once the buzz has died I think it is responsibility of the of the media to 
uh, you know, make follow-ups on these things because, like I said, the audience, the audience are very, uh, they are lost for choice, really. Mm -hmm. Look at how many breaking news and issues and gossips and everything is happening every day. Mm -hmm. So the audience moves on very fast. Um, mm -hmm. We are never short of, if I use our Kenyan context, we are never short of things to, to hashtag about and things that trend. Mm -hmm. And those die down. But as the media, um, the mainstream media, I think we owe our audience and the general public really uh, follow-ups to some of these issues. Even when the social media buzz around issues of, um, of police brutality, gender-based violence, we have seen in the past very common uh, occurrences nowadays, the media should um, go behind some of these issues long even after the buzz on social media has died mm -hmm. and recognize that they haven't lost their role still because you the media are the professionals they have a code of conduct they they um they have the, the the public interest at heart and therefore they should not relinquish that role mm -hmm. and assume just because something has died on on social media we will not follow up on it we will also let it go um follow up on issues of public interest as the media i think that is that is what i can i can say and uh, like using your words, like the floodgates are open, mm -hmm. everyone is now there. Yes. Do you think there is a need mm -hmm. for like regulations mm -hmm. on maybe certain topics that even if we have opened all the channels, mm -hmm. like there are some areas which should only be dealt in by professionals and not just all and sundry? Well, that would be a very ideal situation, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. But uh, we all know that uh, regulating uh, the media, the social media spaces has been very difficult, truth be told. Mm -hmm. Monitoring of what happens on social media and uh, the, the fact that you've said that the floodgates are open and now everyone is now, you know, a media personality, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, those that are trained and those who have never been to a journalism class or um, do not even know what the code of conduct for journalists um, is are all packaging information and sharing it. So ability to regulate, regulation would be a, a great thing, like you're putting it, um, have subjects uh, that are no go for people who do not have the professional qualifications, um, you know, to do that. But honestly, um, that would be difficult, but it would be the ideal situation. Can it be done uh, with a lot of difficulty, in my opinion, because of the, the, the kind of access that the audience now has and how difficult it is to really keep tabs with um, everyone and what they are doing on their social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Yes. And digressing a little bit, mm -hmm. like during the COVID-19 pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, the social media had a way of actually bringing a lot of income to people who did not have anything. A lot of people became content creators and by moving into these fields, they, it also offered employment for them. Yes. Now. Coming into 2021, there has been talk about digital taxation. Now, the measure to tax this growing industry of sorts, do you think it is something that is retrogressive or will it halt the growth or what, what do you think will be its, its effect in your opinion? Um, taxation is never a bad thing, mm -hmm. um, Kutosi, because um, we are citizens and people that work should pay taxes mm -hmm. uh, and that's how we really finance our development um, priorities. Mm -hmm. So um, taxing people that are earning from whatever kind of platform mm -hmm. is not a bad thing. Maybe our concern as the media should be to hold um, you know, the government to account. Uh, but in my opinion, people should pay taxes if you earn uh, you should be able to take, to pay taxes for it mm -hmm. because everyone else is working maybe not online but as long as you're working and you're earning i do not think it's really a backward thing or um, aimed at curtailing growth or anything um, but then it is up to these content creators um, and media the media specifically mm -hmm. to really take up their watchdog role and um, you know um, oversight role and make sure that these taxes that these content creators and everyone else really is paying um, a good whatever development agenda they were meant to go to. So no, taxing is not really in and of itself a bad thing because it is, it is 
it is good that we all contribute to the development agenda. Very true. Yes. And looking at like even Kenya mm -hmm. uh, abroad, we are usually referred to with the Maasai culture. Mm -hmm. You know, as in, we, if, if someone who has not been to Kenya mm -hmm. would be very conversant with the Maasai culture. Mm -hmm. And culture, in its way, find its way into progression to future generations through artwork and things that we release for future generations. Now, since we have a moment where we are having a, so many forms of art coming together, mm -hmm. do you think there is a threat on our historical archives in times to come? Do you think we'll have some sort of confusion because there is no like manning of what is coming through? Um, I, I think in terms of uh, preserving culture, mm -hmm. Again, this is where again the <clears throat> the the, the, um, the mainstream media and the other other players really come to play, mm -hmm. because culture evolves. I do not think anything is static. Um, and this is my opinion that there is still ways that we can preserve culture even as it evolves, because uh, whatever was considered. Um, the traditional way of, for example, the Maasai or whoever else uh, has had influences, you know, with the, the coming in of technology, with the tendency for content to flow across borders and people learning new ways of doing things. But I do not think there is any threat per se, because what we, will happen is probably um, a situation where culture and cultural practices and norms mm -hmm. are um, archived, like you say, as they evolve, so that we have uh, evolution over time, and those are captured, um, you know, uh, from one stage to the other, or as they are infringed upon, like you say, but still, uh, we, we still have ways of preserving um, what really we, we, pre we term as cultural practices or norms. So I don't think it's a major challenge per se. It is depends on how uh, people that are keen on preserving cultures, or these cultures approach it and how well they keep uh, tabs of what is happening culturally and the developments that come uh, with, with, uh, with growth and technological advancement and new knowledge. Okay, and as we close, in a risk of seeming partisan, mm -hmm. like when we do allow everything to come through social media, yes. who will hold us morally responsible? How will we, as in, there is a risk in my, in my view. Do you see a risk in the morality of the nation as a whole in the current space where all gates are open? I think there is a risk mm -hmm. um, in that uh, if you mean by, by having a lot of content and a lot of uh, things just unregulated, unregulated mm -hmm. I think there is a risk, to be honest, um, that we will erode a lot of our moral, the moral fiber and the things that we really, because uh, we, we are not really, we have not been used traditionally, I will tell you, things like gossip, you know, on, on the mainstream media, we do not really have columns and the platforms where the entire business of this column or platform is to gossip about other people and air their business out there, for example. Mm -hmm. And now we see people whose um, social media presence is um, anchored on um, airing dirty laundry um, about other people and infringing on other people's privacy. So yes, there is a risk if we do not uh, have a little bit of um, control uh, to have uh, situations where you really even are not safe in terms of who you te what you share and uh, who you share with, and you don't know uh, when, when next you will be trending uh, because your your business public I mean private business is now public and everyone knows stuff they shouldn't know, mm -hmm. you know about yes there is a risk. Okay, the Terry, that's all the time we had, and thank you very much for actually informing us more and actually helping us even take a moment realize the risks and the wins in actually being the way we are and the roles that are evolving among the audiences. Well, that's all we have for you right here on our discussion. And feel free to keep the conversation going on our social media handles. We are at KUTV underscore Kenya on Twitter and KUTV Kenya on Facebook where we are streaming live. And feel free to understand that what we do today will really matter tomorrow. 
And as an audience, I may be on this side, but you also have a way of responding. Look at the way we just aired our social media handles. But anyway, stay tuned. Thank you so much, Emmanuel Kutosi, for that. Now with that, we take another very short break here on KTV Prime News. In a moment, shall we come back with more? Stay with us.